Hello, good afternoon, guys. Welcome to MK Community Sports My name is Muhammad. Um, in this part, part two, we're going over chapter two with types of tow trucks. I went over chapter one briefly before. I'm going to go over chapter two types of tow trucks. So I'm going to go over the most important parts of the obviously about the chapters itself. I will not talk everything because I don't feel like everything is going to be part of the test. But I'm going to go over the main parts. So tow trucks have three. This light duty this medium duty and this heavy duty just know that light duties are between this to this 86,000 to 10,000 pounds this can be a test question saying that which is which now you know light duties are this what are they designed you need to know that as well they're designed to transport automobiles pickup trucks and small vans medium duty medium duty are to 10,001 to 26,000 pounds they can tow or transport medium sized trucks Oh, they can, I'm sorry, they can tow to transport medium-sized trucks, buses, and recreational vehicles, as well as smaller vehicles. Heavy-duty, obviously heavy-duty tow trucks are over 26,000 pounds. They're designed to, trans to transport large buses, trucks, trailer, and heavy con construction equipment. These three are very important. I would really know which one is which. It can be a test question. I would know, obviously, the difference between light-duty, medium-duty, and heavy-duty. I will not really just read it once, I will memorize them at least. Car carriers, well, car carriers are sometimes referred to as slideback, rollback, equipment transfer, or flybacks. Need to know what they are also known as, that's one thing you need to know. Uh, they are, they are up, their car carriers are up to 40 feet in length, bumper to bumper, including bump roads. They can generally transfer into automobiles, pickup trucks, and small vans. Although large car carriers often refer to as equipment transporters transport large vehicles, farm machinery, and construction equipment. That's what you need to know with the car carriers. Keep that in mind. Now, this is the diagram. As you can see over here, the carrier classification. This is a light duty tow truck. As you can see, this is the tow truck with light duty, and this is the car carrier. As you've probably seen it. Uh, it all depends what type of car carrier it is. This is a heavy duty tow truck. As you can see, this is for like buses and stuff like that. Medium duty right over here. We tow truck is also a car carrier as well, and there's a low boy trailer for bigger, for more additional car carriers. Going over chapter three, we'll finish chapter three as well. It's not that big chapter. Uh, let's see how many pages it is. Yeah, we'll finish chapter three. We we'll finish chapter two. Going to chapter three. The purpose of this manual is to explain how to perform proper towing procedures. That's common sense. Let's skip all this part and just go to the term explained. These are going to be the terms explained in the chapter. All till here to here, these are going to be the, the uh, terms that you can be asked. You need to know this. The most common cause of accident that leads to death and injury to tow truck operator is equipment failure. This is a test question. They will always ask, what's the common reason for accidents and death is going to be equipment failure. A lot of times when tow truck drivers drive tow trucks, uh, if, you don't, if you're not really careful of, of basically putting the equipment in the right place, hooking the equipment, hooking the car, or whatever it is, you can basically, you know, really, you know, mess up everything. Every, all the equipment, there's a rating. As you can see, when you when you exceed the rating posted on the equipment, you, not the manufacturer, will be at fault the equipment fails. So let's say if your rating states that um, let's say if you have a tow, uh, tow truck with, such as this one, a light duty tow truck, and it says that not more than 26,000, and you actually do more than 26,000, the rating did tell you that not more than that, but you end up doing it. If something happens, you will be at fault, 100%. They will not take the blame, they will blame on you. So be very careful. And even this states over here, even a one-time overload can cause undetected damage, weakening the equipment significantly causing equipment failure that result in injury and death. This is a highly high level test question. I will know what it is. I know how equipment failure works. So read through it. That's the reason why most tow truck driver drives because of equipment failure. They because they they exceed they exceed the uh, the, the vehicle rating and that's not supposed to happen. Just keep that in mind. Uh, never exceed the rating of the weakest link. There's always, uh, you know, there's links in it. Never exceed it. Keep that in mind. Chapter 4, tow truck rating. Let's do the goal right now. The most widely recognized rating for tow trucks or any other type of truck is a manufactured gross vehicle 
rate rating. This is which we were going before. GVWR. That's the most common one. The rating consists of unladen, unloaded, or curved weight of the vehicle plus the ma maximum carrying capacity recommended by the vehicle's manufacturer. This is the front gross axle vehicle rating and rear gross axle vehicle rating. What does that mean? Because total combined, this is how much you could actually tow up to. So obviously you need to know how much you're towing, what, what it is. It's like a certain math you have to do in order for you to know how much you have. Obviously you should know your, your tow truck, every tow truck has a, probably a booklet that tells you how much the gross vehicle max rating is, so keep that in mind. A truck's gross axle vehicle rating, which is this one. Axle vehicle rating is the amount of weight that a single axle or combination of axles is designed to carry. The total gross axle vehicle rating for all axles equals the tow truck gross vehicle waste rating. See diagram one below, just we see. For example, a tow truck might have a gross vehicle weight rating of 27,500 pounds, with the front axle rated at 9,000 pounds and the rear axle rated at 18,500 pounds. Obviously, now they're, they're talking about how much all, all together. Basically, they're saying that uh, do not exceed it. If you know that your vehicle, this is your gross vehicle weight rating, don't exceed it on the gross axle weight rating. Just make, make it simple. There's a thing called, as this is called overhang, it increases the safe towing capacity of the tow truck, decreasing. Overhang is measured from the center of the lift point of the center of the rear axle of the tow truck. This is because a tow truck acts like a seesaw. As the load becomes heavier or moves further away from the rear axle, it tends to lift from front axle off the ground. So, putting in simple English is this. Let's say if you're towing, uh, um, your gross vehicle weight rating is 27,000 pounds. And you're towing a 30,000 pound vehicle. Your front vehicle axle might go up from the ground because you're towing more than what you were supposed to tow. So basically that's what they say. The safe towing capacity may be defined as the amount of weight or load that does not cause more than 50% loss of original unloaded from front axle. Basically that's what you can see right over here in the diagram. It talks about right over here, front axle weight, weight wheel base inches. Just make sure you don't exceed your your gross vehicle weight rating. And there's actually a diagram and formula that you're supposed to do. They don't usually ask this in the test. I wouldn't really stress on this, but uh, just for your reference, you need to know. Uh, this part, even over here, they don't really ask the question. Not that I remember, but it's all you know. Just read this on your own and obviously know what it is. Tire capacity. Now. You should never use tires that do not meet manufacturer specification, and you should always keep your tires properly inflated. Keep this again be a test question. Keep that in mind. Always be sure to check your tire pressures when they're cold. Obviously, at dispute to five to ten pounds of pressure can affect the carrying capacity of tow trucks, particularly when using a wheel lift or underlift. Basically, keep the tire pressures in, in, in a normal. That's part of tire pressure. Equipment capacity, equipment the equipment on a tow truck that is inches. We gave cables, chains, and snack bars also rated. They're also rated as well. Keep that in mind. Generally speaking, equipment carries two ratings a breakthrough strength rating and a working load limit. I will know which all of them. I will know these both ratings by heart when it came to equipment capacity. The breaking strength rating is established by the manufacturer as a maximum of weight or load that new unused equipment can bear under ideal laboratory conditions without being damaged. The working load limit is the maximum weight or load that the equipment along for responsible wear and tear can be wear under normal operating conditions. I will know all this part. I will, I will actually highlight it. I will know. Keep that in mind. Uh, for example, most change cables and snatch blocks have work load limit of either 3 to 1 or 4 to 1. This means that the working load limit is either one third or one quarter of the breaking strut rating. Just keep that in mind. That's what they're basically saying about the working load limit. Uh, these are some of the ratings that you can see, diagrams, we put it up for you, for yourself. Let's go to the most important part, let's go to 9. Um, you would, should know this, a retractable rating will be higher than extended rating. Towing device you should show a lift rating and a tow rating. I will know this part. Uh, do not lift a vehicle that exceeds those ratings, like booms, wheel lift, and un under lift may have retractor exceeding rating. Uh, that's like, just like as you see over here, for even a one-time overload of tow truck equipment to cause undetected damage, weakening equipment significantly, causing subsequent equipment failure, can result in injury and death. 
as you can see they went back over here again I would know this part always use the proper equipment don't take shortcuts take your time and, and obviously be safe uh, to always, this is also important to avoid a flying hook. Make sure that the, that is point is facing uh, upwards. The point is facing upwards. I will know this part as well. Can be a test question in this position. It will fly towards the ground if it slips and pull loose. Anticipate the path that the hook might take if, if it were to become loose and keep yourself out of this path. This is the test question. I will know this part. The flying hook. Let's finish with chapter four. We will consume with chapter four with another part. Uh, let's finish from here. Thank you again guys for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys have any other questions, comment, concern, please comment, like, subscribe. I'll try my best to help you out as much as I can. Thank you again guys for watching this video and I hope you guys enjoyed it.